Welcome to My View from the Woods. This is my next project. Stick around and I'll tell you what it is. In the meantime, enjoy Buttermilk Falls from Ithaca, New York. Buttermilk Falls, Ithaca, New York. I hope you enjoyed Buttermilk Falls. Buttermilk Falls is in Ithaca, New York, about an hour or so south of where I live currently. Um, it's also one of the places I went as a child as soon as I got my license. It's a very progressive town for upstate New York. It's got more than just Buttermilk Falls, it's got three or four other state parks that have uh, waterfalls and these huge potholes that formed in the bedrock of the streams that when I was a kid you could actually go into and swim and hang out in and cool off in the summer. Well, now they don't even let you in the, in the creeks because of all the people. But Ithaca is a great place and I'm going to show you more of Ithaca as the summer progresses here. But today I want to talk about my hydroponic system and um, I'm going to call it a hydroponic system. To me it's more of a flow flow system. Um, it's a water system that's in a reservoir. It gets pumped up through hoses and into these special pots that will drip water and nutrients down in through the roots of the plant into the soil and continuously feed the plants or as much as I need to water them. Um, it's a great system. It's not too pricey. I think it was like $136 so it isn't too bad and I look at it as an investment because I know that wherever I am I'm gonna to wanna to grow some sort of vegetables inside during the summer. So I might as well get started now while I'm in this apartment. Learn how to use it so that when I do get to my homestead instead of eating canned and vegetables I can actually have a few fresh vegetables through the winter too. So let's get started. Oh by the way it's called Floraflex the system I'm at. It's very popular with the pot growers. Um, you can see these in California and wherever else they're growing it they have these huge greenhouses full of these um, flora, um, Floraflex pots um, but it can also obviously be used for vegetables and the one thing about the pot growers I'm gonna say or the marijuana growers I don't want to give them a, a slight there is that they're growing for profit and when there's profit involved there's science involved and it's recorded and to me that's key because these people know what they're doing with their nutrient cycles they know what they're doing with their systems and we as uh, average daily amateur gardeners if you will can take what they learned in their daily struggle to make money and apply to our crops and benefit us as well so here's how I'm going to get started with the Floraflex system. First up's the base. Here I got some Home Depot roller stands. Now normally I wouldn't use something this expensive just to hold up a platform to put plants on. But I can use these roller stands when I get to my homestead as a, a roll off and roll on for the chop saws or whatever I really need for my building. So um, I decided to buy them now and I'll use them for a different purpose later. So these are roller stands. Conveniently, not on purpose, I like to say it was on purpose, but it wasn't on purpose, is the tray that I'm going to use fits perfectly inside these guides right here. Clips right on, fits in there tight, just like it was made for it. Yeah, I planned that. Sure, sure I did. Okay, let's get on with the tray next. The tray I'm going to use is a Botanicare 1x4 flood table. And you can see it's set up with grooves. This is for drainage holes. You can put holes in the bottom of this so that you can have an inflow here and it'll flow down to this deeper outflow. What I'm going to do is put them both down here. There's going to be two holes. You can see there's divots. Turn it around. They have pre-made divots so that you can drill holes into the bottom of the tray. And the purpose for that is for flood and ebb. So you have one hole that has a screen that has a flood. So you pump water up into this tray, floods water in here, and the plants uh, yeah, take the water from the bottom. And then the other one's a drain, which is higher, so it allows you to adjust the level of water inside the tray. I'm going to use it for both purposes. So I'm going to have at the top, there's going to be a pump that's going to go through a header system that's going to put a, it's not really a drip system, but basically a pour system 
You'll see these later. A pour system into plants. The water will run through the plants down into here. I will have room when the plants are small to put some microgreen trays down in this part. So I'm going to have the outlet a little bit higher so that there's about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch of water in there. But first, before we get started, we need to drill holes in the bottom for the drains. I'll show you the drains once I get the holes made. Bonacare, Botanicare, however you pronounce your name, if you're listening to this, please try to make the drains and the inputs a little bit different size. The hole required is an inch and three eighths and an inch and three eighths hole saw. It just doesn't really come with any kits. It'd be a lot easier for people if you made a, the diameter of the holes the same size as one of the kits, whether it's an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. It would just be easier on people. I had to buy a separate uh, inch and three eighths hole saw for this. So let's get on with that part. Okay, what I have is an inch and three eighths hole saw. With the pilot, I'm going to put the pilot into these divots right here and drill two inch and three-eighths holes through here. That's that. Don't worry. I got a vacuum anyways. Okay, I took a knife, cleaned up these inside edges of the two holes. And these are, I'm going to show you some close-ups later. These are the drains, the inflow. This is an inflow if you want it. Goes just in there. There's a gasket right here. Rubber gasket. And this is a small half inch hose nipple. It'll go in like this. And then this one's the outlet. You can see you can have extensions on here. These unscrew. Same way, rubber gasket. But this has a three quarter nipple on it because you really want the outflow to have more potential flow volume than your inflow. And this would go in here. In this case, you'd pump water in this lower one. It would flood the table up to this high and then flood through this screen. Again, I'll show you a close-up. Back into your reservoir. What I'm going to do is take this extender off, put it on here. They'll both be high. And I'm going to actually water from the top, but the level will be somewhere about a half an inch higher. So I'll show you some close-ups. Just so you can see the process a little bit better, here's the parts. You have the screen, the extender. This goes on top of the tray. Here's the washer. Sorry. Here's the washer right there. This nut goes on to here, tightens up on the back side of the flood tray. And then the nipples where the hose extends into the reservoir. Here's one I'll put together. So you have the screen, the extender, this screws into the bottom of the tray, this goes up from the bottom of the tray, and the nipple attaches to the hose that goes to the reservoir. So let's put these in the tray. Here's the process. We got the two holes in the bottom. We're going to take our, this one's the outlet, put it through the hole like that make sure the washers in there turn it over and screw the nut on screw it on so it compresses the washer on the inside I'll do the other one again we're going to make sure that the washer is on there tight there's nothing between it stick it through the hole it over. Screw the nut on. And press the washer. So there we go. So here's the setup. I'm going to use a five gallon pail to start with as a reservoir. It may be too small, but I like the height of it compared to a 12 gallon bin. I can control my fertilizer use and water use a little bit better with a five gallon pail. Uh, the two nipples you see coming down, one should be an inflow and the other one's a drain, but I'm going to use them both as drains at the moment. They'll go down back into the reservoir, into the pail as a reservoir, and then I need a third hole for a hose that comes off the top of the pump that will go to the header system that will deliver water to the plants. 
And I also need a hole in the top for the uh, electric cord that goes to the pump because the pump is submersible. So let me put some holes in the top of this pail and we'll start hooking it up. Eco 264 fixed flow pump. I think it might be too much. It's supposed to do 290 gallons an hour. I think it might be too much. I'm not going to do it 290. I'm probably only going to do two or six gallons per hour. I'll show you how I'll adjust that later. Um, but these pumps are fairly, fairly inexpensive. I can get a much smaller one for 10 or $14 if I want. But since this came with the kit, I'm going to use it. The pump. It's a submersible pump. It has suction cups on the bottom. Again, I'll just keep rotating this and hopefully you can see that those are some suction cups. So it sits so this pump just sticks to the bottom of the pail. Just like that. You can see these suction cups work pretty good and it holds the pump right in there. Yeah, I'm tipping it right upside and it's staying there. So that's how we get water up to the plants. Now let me hook up the hoses and let's get her going. So that's the setup. I got two drain lines at the moment. This will fill the pots and the extension cord coming out. I can check the fluids just like this and then use a funnel to put it in. I want to take it out. Taking it out is going to be a pain. So what I may have to do is lose the garments at some point. Either that or get another top and just cut out a square. Put all the hoses through the square so that I can lift the top off but I wanted to keep it as contained as I could. All right, so now we have the reservoir set up. So how do we distribute the water to the plants? Floriflex comes with this header. It has eight ports and it connects to the tubing here. What's also nice about Floriflex is if you have a permanent setup you can use CPVC or PVC lines. They ha actually have these lines where you can connect them solid, put them here with actual valves. So this can be a permanent setup. I'm definitely not a permanent setup, so I'm going to sort of cob. I'm going to hold this header system up, but it's, it's going to work. So let's take a look at this header system. It has a top that screws off. See, it's well threaded has a rubber seal on the inside, has this spacer piece, it has this flat valve. And this is how you control the water. Remember, the pump's going to pump what the pump will pump, depending on how much head height you have. In other words, how high you're going to raise the water, what the level is, what the level of the water is in the reservoir. The pump's going to pump whatever it is. So the way to control it or with these little handy devices here. I'll show you some close-ups. They control the water flow. So this one will do two gallons per hour. This one will do six gallons per hour. The red and the black do 10 or 20 gallons per hour. So these distribute the water to each of the eight ports at a particular flow rate. That's how you control the water. It's a rather simple system. Round holes. I'm going to use the two gallon to start with. You match up the round points, not the star, the round points. Lost a flapper valve. They go right into those holes. If you have nimble fingers, they go right into those holes. The flapper, the flapper valve goes over the top. The spacer fits into 
the space and the top screws on and now two gallons per hour will flow out each of these eight ports that's the floor flex they call it the bubbler it's really just a distribution system okay so now we have water we'll hook this up to the hose that comes from the pump right here to this nipple now we have water to a distribution system. How do we distribute the water to the plants? The Floraflex, the Floraflex kit I bought comes with several tubes. It comes with this green quarter inch tubing. It has eight four foot pieces. It has, put some of these together already. It has a lot of these T systems and these small tubings. So I think it's pretty obvious how it works, right? The four foot tubing goes on to the header system onto each of these nipples, just like that. Nice thing about these nipples is you can actually move them right, left. So depending on where your bubbler is compared to your system, you can have some adjustments here. So that's the distribution system. What's it going to distribute to? These are the floor pots. These are the six inch pots. You can see they have holes in the bottom. Sort of even got holes in the legs. And I'll show you how these sit on the trays. So this is where you put your medium. Now you can put pure cocoa fiber in here. You can put those foam blocks as a rock wool. You put rock wool in here. Or you can put a soil in. And what happens is we're going to water from the top. Water is going to drip down through, drip out these holes, and build a nice fibrous root system that gets air trimmed at the bottom. So there's no coiling around the pot. There's no roots that are going to coil. So you can either grow in these, transfer them to eight, and they have bigger ones, or you can put them into larger pots. Or if you really want to, you could put them outside. There's going to be no transplant shock because it's going to be air trimmed at the bottom. You're just going to lift the plant right up out of here, and you're just going to have a huge root ball. The best part, and this is the reason I bought this floor flex system, is this distribution top. These tops fit right on. Get it lined up. Fit right on these containers. But what's so special about these tops? How the water is distributed. You can see each of these has a little dome over the holes. So there's lots of holes in the bottom. This is where the plant, so if you have plants that are already growing, you just take this, slip it over the plant, and the plant stem goes through this larger hole. But the distribution system works by flood. So we're going to pour water onto the top of this tray. It's about a half an inch high. And the holes don't immediately let the water flow down through the plant. It sort of pools in here and then it gets distributed evenly amongst all of those holes on the bottom. What this is going to prevent is when you pour water in from the top, you're not going to get the plant wet. You're not going to put holes in your potting mixture soil because it's going to drain through. And you're not going to create preferential flow paths for the water because the water is going to get distributed evenly across the whole surface of the pot. That's why I like this system. Okay, so here's the pot. Here's the top. We have our header and our water line that goes to the plants. How do we get the water distributed evenly on this top? I'm going to show you three different ways here in a second. Let me get set up and then I'll show them all to you. First, actually, before I get to that, let me show you the clips. So it comes with these clips. What these clips do is hook over the surface of the pot. So they're just clips. But what they do is they hold the tubing. So if you have your tubing, these tops right here, these tops right here 
fold down. And they fold down so that it creates a hole in the middle. And the hole goes from high to low. So when you put your tubing in, match up the holes, clip it shut, the line is pointed down. So then it's just a matter of clipping this onto your top and now you're distributing water to the top. And there's all different kinds of ways that you can distribute water to it. So you can have a single point like this that floods this whole surface. Or you can connect the line with a single line to the, T, to the top and then put a T. Let me take it off. Put a T at the end, clip it on, set it up, and now the water will distribute left and right onto the top. Or you could also put the T further back, use the two short lines and two clips and put water across the whole half of the tray. Which system am I going to use? I don't know. I'm going to set this thing up. I'm going to have different configurations and I'm going to see how the water floods across the surface and determine which one I want to use. So that's why I like this Floriflex system. I think it's going to be really great for these plants that we're going to water across the whole root area. The roots can grow down. They're going to get air trimmed at the bottom. They're not going to circle. I can feed them whatever nutrients I want to through the pump system. The water is going to hit this tray, flow back to the drain, go back in the reservoir, and loop through. It's very efficient. I'm not going to be wasting any fertilizer. It's not going to evaporate. It's going to sit in that reservoir. I can put the pump on a timer so I can water for as long as I want to, as many times a day as I want to. It's going to give me a lot, a lot of benefit on how I want to water my plants and at different stages of growth. I won't give them as much water when they're younger, as they get older, as it gets hotter, if it's breezier with the windows open and they're getting more um, dried out by the air, then I can just water them more often. And since I'm a geologist and a lot of times I'm in the field for a week or two, I'm going to have a system set up that automatically waters. I won't have to be here. I don't have to worry about my plants drying out while I'm gone. I know that they're going to be watered. This is why I like this Floriflex system. So let me get the rest of this set up and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, this is the six gallon an hour flow. You can still see, possibly, that there's some problems. One, it's going to be kind of hard to compare because obviously one like this that has a single spigot or single outlet is going to run more than one that's divided into two, like this one or this one. So this isn't really a good test. I really shouldn't have tested all these at once. The next problem, I'll move you, try to move you slowly, is the water reservoir. It's too deep and I'm just going to have to change and modify that. The next problem is this container down here. It just, it's not giving me enough room to dump fertilizer in. Plain water I'm not too worried about. Fertilizer water, I don't want to dump it. So I'm going to have to modify the top of this pail. Although I do like the pail because of the depth of the water. And um, the smaller volume is going to let me recirculate it quicker. The next problem, I might cut away here so you don't get seasick. Are these lines hanging down? It's probably going to change the pressure, so I need to do something about that. So as much as I'd like to finish this project up today, I think I'm going to call this video right here, and I'm going to put part two when I do my modifications, and let you know how it goes. So thank you for watching. Appreciate it.